welcome again to the D4U USA channel. I am so happy that you are here. If this is your first time, a big, big welcome. This is the place where we help professionals, entrepreneurs, and investors live their American dream through their business or their profession. My name is Mari Ribeiro and I am an immigration attorney. And even though I am an attorney, I am not your attorney. That's why I invite you guys to make sure that you understand that everything we're gonna be talking about here is going to be for educational purposes only. Now, the reason I do this is because every person is unique and just like every person is unique, every situation is unique. And that's why I really do encourage you and invite you to send us an email, contact us, reach out to us so that we can help you in your unique situation to see what is the best reason, way, manner for you to start coming into the United States through your business or through your investment. So make sure that you take a look below so that you reach out to us, send us an email and we'd be more than happy to help you. Now first, the EB stands for employment base. So this is considered a business visa. And what's super attractive about the EB2 national interest waiver is that this is a particular way for you to get the permanent residency, that's right, your green card without the need for having a job offer by a US-based company or by having a company sponsor your petition, which means you could totally do this independent of anybody else helping you. You can absolutely apply for your own EB2 green card, the National Interest Waiver, without having to have a sponsorship. Now, I know this sounds Sounds totally unbelievable, but trust me, there are so many ways in which D4U USA can make sure that you qualify for something as attractive as an EB2 national interest waiver. Today we're going to talk about what exactly is an EB2 and the national interest waiver and how it differs from the regular EB2. The EB2 is an employment-based application, right? So it means that we are going to be using your background, your profession, your experience, your expertise in order to qualify you to get your green card. And the way that we do that is there's a few things in which we want to make sure that you qualify. Firstly, we want to make sure that you actually have a degree. So you just have to have a university degree from abroad, and it could be at any university in your profession and in your expertise. Now, in addition to that, it's not necessarily just having the degree, but we want to make sure that you actually have work experience, significant work experience and progressive work experience in your field of expertise. And I want to lean in a little bit more about what exactly does it mean to have the expertise and in your field? Because so many times we see so many professionals that are coming from abroad that they really don't even think that they qualify, that they say, how can it be like this is just me doing my regular job, me having my regular profession in abroad, and they really don't even understand that they actually do qualify and the United States actually considers them to be someone with an exceptional ability. And most people shy away from the fact that they don't even think that they are exceptional. So what I mean by exceptional ability is that you have an expertise that goes far beyond what your peers might have. And this is absolutely absolutely incredible and an amazing way in order to showcase this so that you show that you are actually an authority in your field. You are actually a leader in your field. This is another reason why I really invite you to contact us because again, most people kind of think, I don't think I qualify for this, but then when they have a conversation with us, we actually have seen so many different cases in which we do show that people do qualify for an exceptional ability. So there are lots of ways in which you can show that you are a professional with an exceptional ability. Now that's not to be confused with an extraordinary ability, which is an EB1. We are not talking about that because that's a much higher standard. The exceptional ability is specific to the EB2 national interest waiver. And there are seven different things that you can show that the government wants to see in order for you to qualify. Now, you don't have to have all seven. You just have to meet three of these requirements. First is we want to make sure that you have access to an academic record, which actually shows that you did receive a degree, you earned a diploma from a university in your country. The second thing that we want to show is that you actually have letters that can document your experience within 10 years. So this is going to be from people within your industry, experts, people that are well 
well known that can help prove and show and attest the fact that you actually do have the 10 years of exceptional ability in your profession. The other thing we're going to look at is your salary. So do you actually command a salary pay in which showcases your exceptional ability? The other thing that they want to see is that do you have any kind of memberships in a professional association? So a lot of times we professional, we tend to be authorities in our field and we tend to be involved in organizations and memberships, which actually allow us to continue in those different professions. Lastly, have you won any kind of recognition? So do you have awards, certifications, things like that that are really going to showcase the fact that you have earned recognition for the work that you have done within your 10 years experience? Now, like I said, you don't have to show all seven of these things. The last thing that you can show is any other evidence that's going to show weight and support the fact that you do have an exceptional ability. Now, I love this one because it's literally a catch all. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you might have things that don't necessarily quite fit in the other six categories. But again, the government is letting you have a wide range of other evidence and other proof that would help you show that you do have this exceptional ability. Now, I want to stress that it's not necessarily so much about the type of thing that you're going to be showing. So it doesn't have to be a specific thing. It's really going to be the quality of what it is that you're offering as evidence. So some of the things could look like what kind of contributions have you had in business, in the sciences or in technology, right? So I'd like to give an example. So maybe you are an entrepreneur in your country and you have been able to secure venture capital funding from really reputable sources. Maybe you were able to pull funding from people like Mark Zuckerberg or Jeff Bezos, anything like that that's going to really give you credibility and your ability to actually fund companies. Do you maybe have any patents, things that have shown you that you have actually protected legally owned different ways of doing things, new ways of doing things, inventions, things that are going to be utilized and protected with patents, for example. Another thing is maybe you've created industry standards. So things that your peers actually rely on where you actually set the standard for how things are done industry wide. These are some of the things that you can absolutely show in order to support your exceptional ability. Next, with regard to the national interest waiver. So like I mentioned, a ordinary EB2 is going to actually require that you have a company sponsor your application. And that's not the case here with an EB2 national interest waiver. And so the way that you ask for the government, hey government, I don't want you to necessarily require that I have a sponsor or a company petitioning for me because the work that I am doing meets these three criteria. And essentially the first one is going to be that the work is of substantial merit and it is of national interest. And let me break that down just a little bit. So substantial merit means that the work that you are doing has such an important impact in the entire nation of the United States. And they typically go through things that touch upon the economy, they touch on technology, they touch on health, especially these day and ages when the world is just seeing so many things related to health and medicine and science right? So they want to see, do you touch those areas that are really going to have a huge impact on the United States as a whole? Maybe you have things that deal with businesses or science or education that you're going to change the way that workers um, have a quality in which they actually perform the work here in the United States. Maybe you're doing something that is going to change the infrastructure of the entire United States. These are just some of the things that you can show that the work that you're doing is of substantial merit. But again, I really want to highlight the three things that they're really going to be looking at, which is in the area of technology, right? Technology is the future. The United States government wants to invite and wants to attract people that are really going to be pushing technology forward. The other thing is health. 
medicine, science. We are in a place in the world where we are being globally impacted by things in medicine and in science, not to mention things that have to do with COVID-19. So they want to know whether or not maybe the work that you are doing has an impact in sciences and in the medical field. Lastly, the thing that they're really looking for is the economy, business. America is the nation of capitalism. Money talks. We want to invite people that are really going to have a significant impact on money, business, and things of that nature that's going to strengthen the U.S. economy. Now, it's not enough that you're just doing something that is of substantial merit, but it also has to meet the requirement that it is of national importance, meaning that the work that you're going to be doing isn't just going to have an impact on a part of the United States. Maybe it's just going to impact a few states in the southeast region of the United States. That will not be enough. What they want to see is that the impact that you're going to have is going to absolutely impact the entire United States. So it doesn't matter if the problem exists in California or if the problem exists in Florida, let's say for an example, but it's going to have an impact throughout the entire nation. Now, again, I don't want you to get overwhelmed thinking that, oh my gosh, my work is not this credible or it's not this substantial or it doesn't necessarily impact the United States as a whole. It can absolutely have this impact if you have the right people on your team to craft a really strong application to help showcase that the work that you are doing is of substantial merit and it will actually impact the United States as a whole, which is again why it's super important that you have somebody on your team like D4U to evaluate your case. And the best thing about D4U is that there is no cost in order for us to take a look at your case to see if whether or not initially you qualify. So again, reach out to us, send us your resume, send us your questions, and ask us if whether or not you qualify. We will be more than glad to see whether or not this is an opportunity that is available for you. Thanks again for watching. I'm Mari Ribeiro, your favorite immigration attorney here at D4U USA.